Today we're going to do three demonstrations, which together we're going to use to illustrate how we can understand our result for the conductivity of a material which we worked our way through in a simplified Druda model. What did the conductivity turn out to, to depend on? It was n times e squared times tau divided by the mass of the electron. Now, we can't change the mass of the electron, we can't change the charge of the electron, but let's think about n. n was the number density of charge carriers, and we're going to change that in this experiment right here. So, what do I have here? I have um, power coming from the wall, actually, and the electric current is trying to flow as follows. It's, gonna, it's trying to come up, up this copper post, through this piece of glass. This is actually an eyedropper. It's a glass eyedropper. Back down through this copper post, through the light bulb, and then back to the wall outlet. And the fact that the light bulb is not lit means no current is flowing. Why is no current flowing? It's because glass is an insulator. So let me just show you that the power is connected. I'm holding a screwdriver here. Screwdriver is metal. When I put a metal screwdriver between the two copper posts, now the light bulb lights. So metal is a conductor. So now the electricity is coming up this copper post, across the screwdriver, which is a conductor, down the other copper post, and then through the light bulb. Current is flowing. The light bulb is on. So that, that illustrates that there's more charge carriers. N is much, much, much larger in copper than in glass. Glass is an insulator. This metal, this iron, this steel, and the screwdriver is a conductor, as you see right there. So now what we're going to do is we are going to turn that glass into a conductor. And the way I'm going to do that is by heating it up. And I'm going to heat it up with a blowtorch, my handy-dandy handy neighborhood blowtorch. Um, so What's going to happen when I heat this up is I'm going to heat this up in such, and as I do, the heat is going to shake a lot of electrons loose. So as I heat the glass up, it's going to become a better conductor. And what you should be watching is, you, well, you, you can watch what's happening with the blowtorch on the glass, because that's kind of fun. But also make sure you're watching the light bulb. So let's see what happens. Watch the light bulb. Watch the light bulb. There, you see the light bulb glowing? So what you should have seen there was, as the glass was heating up, that light bulb glowed. So I was changing the number of carriers in this glass by shaking a whole bunch of electrons free. Once I had a lot of electrons free, I could get a current flowing up the copper, now through the glass. Not the room temperature glass, it's not, it's not, a, it's not conducting anymore. With the room temperature glass is an insulator. This is a conductor. But once I heated the glass up, I shook enough electrons free that I increased the number of charge carriers and went way up. It's not quite as large as in here because the, the bulb wasn't as bright as it was when I do this, but you saw the bulb glowing. We're going to do it a second time, but notice, by the way, if you look carefully, you can see that the shape of the glass is different. So there's something else happening to the glass when I heat it up, and that is that it's liquefying, it's melting. So I'm going to do this a second time, and this time I'm just going to let it liquefy. So watch the glass. You'll see its physical state changing. It's melting. It's becoming a liquid. And watch the light bulb. You'll see that as the glass is getting so hot that it's becoming a liquid, it is at the same time becoming a conductor because the light bulb lights. So here we go. OK, watch the bulb. Watch the bulb. The bulb is about to start glowing. There we go. Watch the bulb. The bulb is glowing. That's very, very hot glass. It's a liquid, and it's a conductor. And I'm going to keep going until it liquefies so much that it breaks. There we go. The glass turned to liquid and broke, and so the current stopped. So what we've just seen is that if I increase n, initially the glass had a very low carrier density. n was basically 0. When I heated it up until it was almost a liquid, n went increased enough that glass became a conductor. So now I'm going to do something very similar, but with a very different piece of apparatus. This is deionized water. It's pretty close to ordinary tap water, but it's tap water that somebody somewhere went to great efforts to make very, very, very pure. Okay? It's like distilled water. And um, I have a copper plate here, and I have a copper plate here, and they're connected to a battery. And so I've got electric current is trying to flow from this copper plate to that one through the water, and it's not working because the water, the pure water there, is an insulator. If I touch the plates together, you see the light bulb light. This light bulb over here lights. 
That's because now the electricity doesn't have to go through the water. It's going directly from one piece of copper to the other. The copper is touching. The copper is touching. But if the copper is not touching, the current's trying to go through the water and it can't. Okay? So pure water is an insulator. Its N is very small. But I happen to have some salt here. It's ordinary table salt. And we're going to start putting salt in the water. And as I put salt in the water, you watch the bulb. So let's see what happens to the conductivity of ordinary water once I salt the water. And there you go, the bulb lights. So I have taken an insulator and turned it into a conductor. The insulator was pure water, and I turned it into a conductor by adding salt. What's actually happening here is that, so in this case, I was shaking electrons free inside the glass. In this case, the, the charge carriers, the N, is not describing loose electrons. It's describing sodium and chlorine, chloride ions in the water. By putting salt in, that's NaCl, in the water that falls apart into an Na plus and a Cl minus. And it's actually the Na plus and the Cl minus that are running back and forth. The Cl minuses are going one way, the Na pluses are going the other way. And that's what's giving me the charge carriers, the, the N in here. So in two different ways here, I have taken an insulator, glass, heated it up, increased its N, and made it into a conductor. Here I've taken an insulator, water, poured salt into it, turned it into salt water full of ions, which increased its N and made it a conductor. So the third experiment I want to do, I want to convince you that this is not about temperature. From this experiment, you might think that the lesson was heat something up, it becomes a conductor, cool something down, it becomes an insulator. And I want to show you that that's actually the wrong lesson to draw. The right lesson has to do with, from here, has to do with charge carriers. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to do the third experiment over here, but first let me just turn this light bulb off. I'll just flip this switch here so we don't have to worry about that light bulb anymore. And the third experiment has to do, I'm going to do with this piece of apparatus here. So let me tell you what I'm holding. Um, well, this is a battery. It's a fancy battery, but it's just a battery. And this is sending a current through this light bulb. And if you look closely, you can see the light bulb is glowing. It's not glowing very bright. It's kind of a feeble glow, but it is glowing. Why is it so feeble? It's because the electricity is not just being sent through this light bulb. The electric current comes from the battery before it goes to the light bulb. It goes through this long copper wire coiled onto this post here. And the wire coils around it many, many, many times. And actually, there's probably about 10 meters of wire coiled on here. And because the electricity has to flow through about 10 meters of this fine wire, the current is actually pretty low. And so this bulb is hardly glowing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the conductivity of this copper wire. And I'm going to change it by making it cold. So if you drew the wrong lesson before, you would say, well, I heated that. And if, if you thought it was all about temperature, I heated that, it, the, the, the glass became a better conductor. Now I'm going to cool this. You would say this makes it a worse conductor, so the light should go out. So let's see what actually happens when I cool this. How am I going to cool this? Well, right here I've got some liquid nitrogen. Um, it's about 190 degrees Celsius below freezing point, the freezing point of water. It's very cold. And um, here we go. I'm going to put that in there. And you, of course, were enjoying watching the bubbling liquid nitrogen, but watch the light bulb. Is the light bulb going out, or is it getting brighter? Do you agree that it has not gone out? I would say it has not gone out. Do you agree that it's gotten brighter? It has, in fact, gotten brighter. I'm not sure how impressive this one is. Okay, so we're going to do this a second time, this time in the dark, so you can more clearly see what happens to the light bulb when I cool the copper wire down. I'm going to put this copper wire into a bath of liquid nitrogen, cooling it from room temperature down to about 190 degrees Celsius below freezing. We'll see what happens to the bulb. You see how it got brighter? So this time it was much clearer because we're in a darker room. Why did the bulb get brighter? Well, when I cool this down, I am not changing the number of carriers. So something else is changing. So let's remember our formula for conductivity. N is not changing when I cool this down. I'm not shaking any extra electrons free. I'm not adding any new ions. N is not changing. 
Mass of the electron, that can't change. Charge of the electron, that can't change. What's left is tau. And what is tau? Tau is the mean, the time it takes for an electron between one scattering and the next. Remember that the electrons in the copper wire are flying along and then once in a while they scatter. And if tau gets longer, the conductivity gets better. And what's happening when I cool this down is I'm making tau longer. And the reason is that I'm, I'm calming down the thermal motion of the copper atoms themselves. And so the copper atoms are jiggling around less. And that means that they interfere with the, with the motion, the ballistic motion of the electrons less. The electrons can fly longer distances between collisions with copper atoms. And so tau, when I cool this down, tau goes up, the conductivity goes up, the bulb gets brighter. So um, three different experiments. In the first two, I changed n. When I increased n, the bulb got brighter. This one, I didn't change n, I increased tau. So to understand how conductivity changes, it's not, just, it's not a matter of temperature, it's a matter of n and tau. Over here we changed n, and here we changed tau.